I was walking around New York, digging in the sights and sounds, and I noticed that there were flowers in some places and trees in others, buildings, and the people were m moving a bit about them with very little awareness that they're all going to be dead within a matter of decades. <laughs> I'm very excited to be in New York City. I don't get here very often. And frequently when I come, it's very hard for me to find a place to stay because most of the accommodations are, are not appropriate for someone of my age and uh, background. And so I was happy with that my friend, a good friend of mine named Elizabeth, Elizabeth Constellton, I was able to put me up this weekend at her apartment. I've been on tour for a long time, I'm touring with my book, which is called Alligators I've Ignored <laughs> and Other Tales from Downstairs. <laughs> It's a book I've been working on for 600,000 years. I've written one word every so often. Sometimes I'll just write a letter and occasionally just a part of a letter. What you would call the straight part of the T and that will be my work for that day. You see, I've never been one to think that rushing is a good idea. same for you on your planet because you don't live very long. You don't. I do. I'm not trying to brag or anything. But you just don't live very long. This is what I would suggest then. Perhaps work on a project and think of somebody that you figure might be born near the time you die. <laughs> and space your project out so that this person could take it over. Now, you have to make sure that they're born about 10 to 15 years before you die. Then you can teach them what you're working on, and they can pass it down. And let's say you want the project to take a hundred thousand years. It's a gamble. <laughs> because who knows how responsible the future people will be. Welcome, Clay Woman, to uh, the Duckworth Museum.
wonderful to see you here. Really a big thank you, Ben, for organizing this. It's, I've been to Earth many times, but this is my first time back near the border between New Hampshire and Vermont <laughs> since um, I know that it's a difficult time, a lot of tensions between your two states because of Brexit. <laughs> because I heard that because of Brexit they might be re-establishing a hard border also between Vermont and uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> so, um, I know it's a very delicate time for you. Especially I saw, you know, I've seen the military garrisons around by the river, and it's a, a shocking sight, and I do hope that um, you'll try to keep the um, intense animosity between your people at bay, because the last time Vermont and New Hampshire went to war, and it was utterly devastating, and I don't want to see that happen again, because it's really such a lovely part of the country, you know, and so um, I'll do what I can. I'll speak to some of the generals, see if perhaps we can work something out. But, you know, it's always sad to see that happen. <sighs> I have to say, though, it's much nicer being here than it is being in Delaware, where um, the, every time I've gone to visit there, it's just people just like, they attack me. You know, there'll be a lot of people waiting outside. It's very dangerous. I usually try to come in through a back door because there's just marauding gangs there. It's really dangerous. So I prefer it here. Now, and Joe Biden is extremely dangerous. <laughs> Came after me one time as well. You know. And um, I mean, we've known each other for years, but he, uh, if he gets it, you know, when he gets going, he'll just like accidentally move his hand in a certain way and he'll just like knock you over. And so I try to, you know, I, I, I mean, I know he, it's all in fun, really. It's really great. But, so the thing is, you know, I, um, I'm, I don't know. I'm, my name is Clay Woman. I'm 500 million years old, in Earth years. I come from the Marillion Galaxy, which is very far away. And um, what I like to do is, I, you know, I have, um, I have my favorite places in the universe to visit, and Earth is really one of my absolute favorites. I mean, there are some terrifically boring planets out there. You're not one of them. <laughs> Definitely one of the more exciting ones. I find, you know, you've got a lot going on, always fighting with each other, which is, you know, great for observers. <laughs> and so I come to visit every once in a while to talk with earthlings, get, you know, some information for myself, and also hopefully, you know, help to share my perspective. And I find it's really, it's really lovely. Um, you know, the first, time I heard about Earth, I was at home in the Marillion Galaxy and I was reading a book that, that I really didn't like. And in the midst of reading it, my friend Maria came over and she was standing at the doorway. The thing about Maria is that um, she's a lot. And we don't, you know, generally Maria, she's the type of friend that you have where you know that if you start talking to her, you're going to have to, you know, be answering a lot of questions, and then she might go off on a tangent about something, and then you think, well, you know, so you, one tries to limit one's, you know, interactions with Maria, although I do like Maria. It's just at the same time, you have to be very careful of your boundaries around her. So Maria was standing there, and she said, Clay woman! And I said, yes, yes, Maria. And she said to me, she said, um, you know, I've, I've found out about this new planet. It's just amazing, really great place to go. And I said, well, that's, um, th thank you. I'm just in the middle of something right now, but um, <laughs> if you could, no, she said, no, seriously, you've got to find out about it. It's called Earth, and it's really up and coming. So 
I said, well, that's, thank you, Maria, thank you. And I thought, usually Maria doesn't know what she's talking about, but let's try to investigate this. So I went online, and they said there was, I looked it up, and it was definitely happening. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go there. And what I did was, I, um, I got in my cart, and I uh, turned it on, and I just started going out there. And um, I arrived, but it was very early on, not much happening, it was mostly molten <laughs> um, rocks, and uh, some single-celled organisms, but nothing much, really. And so I, um, I went back, you know, to the Meridian Galaxy and watched some television programs. And then I waited a hundred million years or so, and I thought, time to go back. So I got back, and uh, the whole time I was like, I'm not telling Maria when I'm going, because she's so <laughs> ruined it, you know? When you visit a new planet, you want to really be able to take it in. You don't want someone talking the whole time about like people they're upset with or you know, resentments they have. Or, you know, this is the sort of thing. So, and it's, when you visit a planet for the first time, it's a very personal experience, very serene. So I went there and I sat there and the um, and I when I got back, it was magnificent. So much had changed. There were all these beautiful creatures fish and trees, things that were not there before. And uh, especially these dinosaurs, which is magnificent. I really loved them. And um, so I would sit on a, um, a, uh, a savanna by myself, and I would just sit there and I would watch them walk by. And um, what most people don't know about the dinosaurs is uh, because this is not evident in the fossil record, is that they had the most beautiful singing voices. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. They would just do this, like, this... It wasn't like belting or anything. It wasn't like a Broadway show. It was more like these incredible three-part harmonies that they would do. And they would just walk slowly down there, and I thought, this is just absolutely transfixing. Sort of like folk music, perhaps. <laughs> and, um, I sat there and um, as I was watching them one time, one of them looked over to me and it said, uh, excuse me, <laughs> what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, I'm just really, I'm just incredibly impressed by your work. And the dinosaur said back to me, it said, well, you know, we, um, this is really sort of a private thing that we do. It's not really for public <laughs> consumption. And I was like, don't, don't worry, I'm not like recording it or anything. I'm not going to try to monetize it. And they said, you know, well, and at that point I just got really uncomfortable and I felt that I, I felt very guilty and so I just sort of, I just stopped talking. And I just sort of calmly walked away and I felt really badly. And then one of the dinosaurs walked around the side and said, her name was Rachel. And she said to me, she said, you know, don't worry about that, it's fine, they just get really sensitive. We, you know, I'd love if you came back. And Rachel and I have, you know, continued to keep in touch. She, for some reason, survived the meteor and everything. She's still alive, and she's doing great. And we're still really good friends. So that's something that I really, um, I really just enjoy. I enjoy Rachel's company. Rachel's a lot nicer and um, a lot less to take than Maria, for instance. So that is something that I love. <clears throat> That's all, I just had to take a little break there because it's a lot to remember the dinosaurs and to remember that time. You know, I try I don't think about it that often because it's hard to think about it because they're all gone, you know. That's the thing about being older and being able to be, um, you know, this old, you know, because you, your lives are, you know, comparatively short, right? And so it is a bit jarring for me that every time I come here, no one that I met the last time is still here, a lot of times. So that's very, although what I've tried to do to compensate for that is I've tried to come more frequently now, so that I can make friends and still stay in touch with them. But, uh, you know, when you live to be several hundred million years old, and you're dealing with uh, 
friends and acquaintances who live to be 80, 90, 100 years old, you know, it's a, it's a balancing act. You know. um, but we do what we can, you know. And, uh, well, here's the thing. I know dinosaurs are stressful to think about, so <laughs> what I'd like to do is do a little relaxation exercise with you, if that would be all right. Um, so, all right, if you would close your eyes. I just want to see if I can, you know, I like to try to calm everyone down after that. So, just move your head a little bit to the right. Move it just slightly back to the center. Now up maybe like a quarter of an inch. Maybe like a centimeter to the left. And you hold it there. And now I'd like you to imagine that you're standing on a spoon. <laughs> and it's just magnificent. You're just standing on it. And I don't need I don't think that I need to tell you the part of the spoon that you're standing on. <laughs> it's rather iconic. It's the part that, you know, it's the part that really says spoon. <laughs> there are two main parts to every spoon. And one of them could be any utensil, really. It's sort of a longer part. Then there's another part of the spoon that is really, truly the essence of the spoon. <laughs> And that's where you are. You're at the critical part of the spoon. And you're standing there, and you're thinking to yourself, well, that's great. I, I like standing here. And you're really, you're really satisfied with that. But then you look in the distance, and you see um, a neighborhood filled with um, rabbits and um, porcupines and also um, a something in the distance that looks like a crane but you can't tell if this is the animal crane <laughs> or perhaps the type of crane that one uses in construction so you want to get closer to it to figure it out so you turn on the motor in the back of the spoon <laughs> and you take it and it takes you closer and closer and closer. You get close to the crane and you look at the crane up at the thing and you say, Hello! <laughs> crane! Um, it's me! Um, I just want to ask you if you are... Um, are you the, the animal crane? Or perhaps the type of crane that one would use in, con in construction? <laughs> And the crane looks back down at you and it says, why is that important to you? <laughs> I'm just doing my job. I'm very busy today. I've got a lot of uh, places to be, appointments. And I don't really feel like I, I need to even, I don't have to explain myself to you. And you think, oh, look, well, well, I'm so sorry. You're a little taken aback, and you think, well, you know, this is not necessarily an invasive question. It's rather utilitarian. You know, you might want to know whether you want to, you know, if it's an animal crane, you might want to pet it or something. If it's if it's a um, construction, then there's lots of things you could do with it in terms of jobs. So you say to the crane, "I'm sorry to um, upset you, but I just, you know, wanted to find out some more information." Well, it says, "Look." I'm asked this question a lot, and I just as a policy, I don't answer it anymore. <laughs> and um, so you say, well, I guess that's that then. And there's a very long, uncomfortable silence. You both just stand there. You're feeling a little, you might be dis disassociating a little bit, <laughs> perhaps. And the crane itself is sort of reveling in your in how you've thrown off you are. And then you finally say, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> then you look at the crane and you say, like, you know, you are who you are. And I'm fine with that. And then you feel a little bit uh, better, and the crane does too, and 
You're not going to be friends. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You're not going to be friends. But at least you know that you've, you've, um, you know, you've, you've sort of stared each other down. So you get back on the, on the spoon and you turn the motor on. It still works and it's great. And you keep moving down the thing. And then all of a sudden, um, well, now comes the part of the relaxation exercise where I'd like you to start worrying. <laughs> so what would be really good is if you start thinking, the best part is to start thinking of financial worries. You know, think about your budget, um, think about your monthly income, if you have a monthly income. If you don't, think about that. <laughs> and think about, you know, what... You know, things that you wish you had, that you don't have. <laughs> think about... Another good thing is to add sort of a social worry into that. So think about things you might have said at a party that could have been misinterpreted. <laughs> Just innocent things, you know. If you have social media, think about a joke you might have said that could have been interpreted very, um, you know, as, as some sort of... Um, awful thing that could get you um, in a lot of trouble online. Really think about this. Feel yourself just relaxing as you think about these things. And then, um, and then I'd like you to um, just open your eyes and you should feel wonderful now. I usually find people feel just fantastic after that, especially the last part. It's really great for everyone. Um, so, well, now that everyone's relaxed, I wonder if, um, if anyone would like to um, perhaps, you know, you can ask me a question about anything, really, and I'll answer it if I know the answer, and I'll answer it even if I don't know the answer. <laughs> so, anyone? Oh, yes, you, in the back there. Um, how many planets are in your galaxy? How many? Well, there's, in the galaxy itself, there's 450,262,721, although that is disputed. Other people say it's 722, 23, but that depends on whether you count um, this one planet called um, um, Joseph. <laughs> because it's not very, it doesn't really have, it doesn't orbit around anything, but it is there. So, um, so there's a lot of, um, lot of debate about that. Yes, sir? Uh, do, you, do you have a middle name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, so... Oh, that's great. I don't even have a last name, really. So. <laughs> or, if, I mean, you could say that it's a... You know, it's just one, it's just, we know like the way you do with celebrities on your planet. They just have one name sometimes, like Cher. She does have a last name there, so I suppose it's different. <laughs> yes, sir? Clay, well, when you imagine the spoon, was it like this or like this? It, you know, that's very interesting that you ask that. It really was the second one. But I wonder why that so it was sort of like, you know, like this. That's very interesting that you asked that, because I just sort of, you know, you've, um, you've made me think a little bit about <laughs> what I've assumed here, mm. you know? I just assumed that everyone thought of it like that. This is why I love humans. <laughs> because I don't... They'll remind you of something you just haven't thought about. Where I come from, no one really questions things. They just say, fine, and they're busy. But here, if I say something like, you know, a spoon, you know, immediately there's some of you in this room that might be thinking of this. Interest. There you go. I was on the high point of the spoon. Ah. I didn't want to be in the low point. Very, very, very interesting. I just, I made what a rather, I was rather presumptuous, really. <laughs> I really was rather presumptuous in thinking that everyone was sitting inside of the spoon as though they loved being 
liquid. <laughs> you know? And I really think that's very, um, very interesting. It tells me a little bit about my own prejudices. And um, well, thank you so much for, um, you know. Yes, yes. Um, where does your name come from? Well, it's funny. Because um, I think that it was, you know, where I'm from, this isn't the name that I use. Um, our language is so, would be so upsetting to you. <laughs> like the sound that we would have to, that we have to make to say my name on Marillion Galaxy is, it's rather, it's rather high pitched. It, um, it's not even a sound that, um, I, I wouldn't want to do that to you. But when I came here, you know, as you would expect, people were sort of, you know, Honestly, it was someone making fun of me, you know, because um, the skin, you know, looks a little bit like that. So I got that, and I thought, you know, that's fun. I'll take it. And I think it's really fun. I noticed some, you know, like, I love the human tradition, too, of taking something that someone says about you, you know, in a rather mocking way, and turning it into a celebratory thing. So I thought, you know what, I'd like to encourage that in humanity. So I'm, I'm going to do it myself. Yes? Where did you look from? Either way. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a baby, yeah. when I was very small, because when we're born, we're extremely tiny. And um, the thing is, is that your, the parents, have to be, when a child is born in the Meridian Galaxy, the parents have to be protected by the police. Because the children are extremely violent when they first emerge from the womb. Because um, it's, it's, a ter it's terrible in there. And so there's a lot of frustration. They're small, very small, but extremely dangerous. So the children are immediately taken from the parents and put somewhere where it takes them two to three years to calm down from how upset they are, and they grow to a normal height, and they're reintroduced to the parents. And as you can imagine, there are a lot of hurt feelings. <laughs> but it's something that we all go through, so we all, you know, um, we all uh, deal with it as best we can, but yes, that is, it's very, very small. Yes. So um, that's a nice segue into my question because I was wondering if you developed your relaxation exercise for humans or you possibly already needed it on your planet. Well, you that's brought it from home. Some of it is from home, and a few things have been added in particular for humans along the way. The financial stuff, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't really have, you know, we have a very different system. It would be very difficult to explain, but, you know, I tried to particularize it. Spoons are, um, are universal. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that we have as well. But we don't have money in the sense that you have money. <coughs> We worry about it. Yes, yes, sorry. What's your favorite food on Earth? My favorite food on Earth? Licorice. <laughs> Red or black? Red or black li licorice? <laughs> I'd say red, yeah. Red. I really enjoy it. I try to have as much of it as I can when I come here because it's illegal. <laughs> Which is very, I don't know why, but it's very really, it's just, It wasn't even that it's bad for you or anything. I think it was a mistake <laughs> they put into the law. And um, no one has been able to um, get rid of it. So it's, uh, it's very, it's, the fine for licorice possession is incredibly high, and no one knows why, but um, it still hasn't been dealt with. So I have to come here to have it. Yes? Do you have men and women on your planet? Well, the interesting thing is we don't really have either. I mean, it's difficult to explain, but we have, there's just beings, and there's not really a, a um, you know, a gender, necessarily, but
But when I come here, I, um, you know, I thought, well, just coming as a Marillion galaxy type of being would be so upsetting, really, to, and jarring and difficult to understand for Earthlings. So I thought, well, I'll come as a form. It'll be, you know, it's just slightly odd looking. I mean, I can admit it. <laughs> and, but at the same time, you know, I thought, well, I'll take on, I'll, I'll go in the more of the woman direction. And, uh, um, you know, I think that will go over better. But no, we don't really have um, that sort of uh, thing. Yes? Do you have a favorite animal on Earth other than humans? And if so, why is that your favorite? Well, I mean, Rachel. Uh, dinosaur. dinosaur, you know. I mean, it's my favorite singular. Oh, uh, I mean, like a species. A species, yes. I mean, um. I love rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but they really got a, you know, um. I don't like hands. I love rabbits. Which makes things very uh, interesting because they're so similar. And uh, one might think, you know, I actually had to look up the difference between rabbits and hares recently, and I thought, why do I hate hares? <laughs> why do I hate them? I just hate them. <laughs> but I really love rabbits. Yes? On your planet, is there a problem with overpopulation since you die so infrequently and there are beings? coming in, you know, being born? Interestingly not. But it's because of our conference calls. <laughs> because we have a weekly conference call with every single being in the entire galaxy. <laughs> and so we really try to organize where everyone's going to sit that week and make sure that it's not in a, um, you know, that we won't bump into each other. We might move some people to another planet. The problem with the conference calls, as you can imagine, is when a lot of people don't mute themselves. <laughs> so a lot of times they'll have to have, whoever's in charge of the call will have to, you know, press mute all. But then invariably, one section of the um, planet gets very upset because they feel that they've been muted unfairly. <laughs> We've tried to work this out. The great thing, though, is that we generally come to a consensus, you know, so that's really great. We, you know, figure out things like, we'll say stuff like, you know, like, well, um, Jennifer, maybe you could go a little bit over to the, you know, can move a little bit to the left next week and get out of the way because there's 16 more kids coming in. So, you know, we'll do that. I, it's, it's odd to me, you know, when, I, when I'm away, I realize how, Complicated it must sound. Yes. Uh, have you had any like long term, maybe not long term in your you know split, <laughs> but like a long term relationship with a human? Well, not with a human, but with um, you know, the, I was married in a sense uh, to a young. Um, his name was, uh, his name is Sinister Grey. And he, um, he was, he used to be the ruler of the Marillion Galaxy before we, you know, had a different system of government. And I was very young and we met and um, he uh, sort of took me under his wing. And uh, we, you know, really hit it off and we ruled the galaxy together for a hundred million years. And, um, so, in that time, um, you know, I eventually, we, we did have to go our separate ways because at a certain point I was not interested in that kind of work. I wanted to, you know, I didn't like administering, you know, planets and all this stuff. It was a lot to do. So I said to him, you know, I'm going to do my own thing now. And he didn't take it well. <laughs> and so, uh, he eventually lost everything, and um, he um, now lives in uh, New York City, in the East Village, in a rent-stabilized apartment on um, Avenue C and uh, 6th Street. 
<laughs> and um, Israel really have any friends. And what he does do is he has this um, project that he's working on where he um, says, if you ask him, he'll say, well, I'm building a mountain. And every day I add a speck of dust. And so every day he just sits there in his room. And every day, at one point of the day, he picks out one speck of dust, puts it on there. And then he just sits there, motionless for the rest of the day. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine being that bitter. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. You know, I haven't seen him. We don't speak really, so it's a lot. Yes, sir? Norma, do you ponder any particular philosophical problems? Well, a lot of them, really. I mean, I think as much as you do, really. I worry about... I'm not excited. You know, the thing is, being alive so long, I, I get attached to being alive. And I am also um, mortal. So, for me, death has always been this thing that is very, 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 very far away. And as it gets a bit closer, because, you know, I'm getting on in years, I've started to... Uh, I don't mean, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, I've started to feel a bit human. <laughs> you know, I've started to feel a bit like what I've noticed uh, you go through with uh, your, um, with your feeling that you don't have enough time to do everything you want to do. So I'm starting to, you know, feel that bit too. At the same time, I feel um, guilty for even feeling that, you know. Um, as I've, ha I've had so much time, but it's still, uh, I don't know if this is particularly a philosophical problem, but it is something that I um, struggle with, and that I do love being alive. Yeah. What is the typical lifespan of new species? Usually about 500 million years and like 10. <laughs> so you're within 10 years of your... You know, expected. I mean, it could go longer, maybe. But, um, yeah, you know, we could be reaching the end here quite soon. So, um, yeah. Do Merlians have midlife crises? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> at about, well, it really happened at about 300 million years. I just thought, what am I doing? <laughs> And the thing is, you know, there's so much time, so I just like, look, I, there was this one wall that I looked at for 300,000 years. <laughs> I just sat there in a position. I would eat and get up, and friends would call, and I would just let the um, machine get it. <laughs> and you can imagine how many messages I had when I finally got to the outlet. I just thought, oh, my goodness. And, you know, it's the same thing, you know, I have just been feeling, um, mm. It was a bit of a pity party, I'll say that. <laughs> but when it was over, I was more excited about life, and I sort of, you know, realised, well, you've only got about 200 million years left. You might as well, you know, go do some exploring. And that's when I really started, um, you know... <laughs> well, I mean, my real fun with Earth started about 70 million years ago. But, um... You know, there was, you know, other, I was exploring other planets before that. I really got into exploring after the crisis. Yes? Has your friend Maria figured out how many times you've come to Earth and, and gone back? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um,. You know, the good thing about it is Maria doesn't really have um, any, uh, she doesn't have a computer or anything. So um, she, I mean, you can imagine what a nightmare she would be on social media. <laughs> so she is very, she's just doing, you know, so I don't tell her. I mean, I've told her that I've come twice, which is horrific. Um, the opposite of exaggeration, whatever that is. <laughs> and, you know, she's, you know, I don't know. I mean, I should, I should probably tell her, really, you know. I feel 
said, the thing is, is that I'm so afraid of Maria's reaction. Because <laughs> I know that she will take things too personally. She'll, um, she'll, feel per that she'll, she'll feel like, you know, that everyone's against her. And so I hold things back, which, you know, gets me into the problem of now I've created a problem with Maria. And eventually she's going to find out, you know. And that's the thing. It's best to be honest. Do, do lots of other folks from your galaxy visit here or visit other planets? Is that like a normal thing or are you kind of a unique? Going this far is a bit unique, yeah. Because, you know, people go within the galaxy a lot. You know, to different planets within the galaxy. Sinister Grey is obviously here too, which I find <laughs> a little bit... You know, why here did he come? Why did he have to come here? Because I didn't, you know, he knew that I'd been coming here myself for a while. This was my favorite place to go. Of course he's here. I frequently go to New York. I speak at Hunter College a lot. And so, you know, he doesn't, you know, he's got boundary issues. <laughs> Uh, do you have like a specific like favorite place on earth or like maybe a favorite store restaurant like where's your happy place here well there's a little restaurant in um in uh it's a well it's not there anymore but it was my favorite place in about 1572 in uh wales there's a little restaurant called hello this is Maria's restaurant, <laughs> and not the same Maria <laughs> at all, not, not at all. And of course, I, you know, I was there visiting some friends, um, doing, some, um, doing some work there at the local university, and I saw this restaurant and I thought, oh, God, is Maria here? <laughs> and I realized it wasn't Maria, it was just the restaurant, and they make, um, they made just really, they made like these great cheeses that they would serve all day long. Um, and I would just sit there, you know, eating and, you know, chatting with people. It was very friendly. And of course, um, it's closed now, you know, but it was really one of my favorite places. Yes. <clears throat> what did you think the first time you saw humans? I was just astonished <laughs> because um, but when I first came, it was about, you know, the first humans really, you know, well, I think about 200, 150,000 years ago, the Homo sapien was, became like a thing. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, I had, of course, seen primates before. <coughs> And they were, you know, lovely creatures, really exciting and stuff. And then there was this one that you would see every once in a while walking, like upright, and um, looking just, you know, generally more um, psychologically burdened than the other creatures. <laughs> you know, the other creatures were just doing their thing, they are having a good time, they might get worried that you'd eat them or something, and immediately I saw these creatures and I thought, oh, <laughs> this one's going to be very interesting. And, you know, one of my favorites, obviously, you know, because um, I think that the... Well, the thing is, is that any creature that knows it's going to die, which the other ones, a lot of them don't, more of them do than you think, <laughs> but it always creates a more anxiety-prone creature. So. I was very excited about it. I was like, I wonder how this is going to turn out. And, you know, it's um, been a, uh, some pluses and minuses. <laughs> yes. Now, when you came to Earth, do you have to change form so that you assume uh, more or less a human likeness? Or have you got that same form uh, in your galaxy? Well, what actually I did was, I did, the first few times I would change form when I came here, and then I just decided I liked it. <laughs> so I would keep it when I go back. 
And that's fine. That's fine with everyone there, yeah. They, they sort of know it's my, my thing. <laughs> Yeah. How long did it take you to grow your hair that long? Um, well, hair grows very slowly, so it took about, I would say, three million years, you know, and so if I did cut it, it would just ruin everything, <laughs> because I wouldn't, you know, I'd come back here and I wouldn't look the same, you know, I mean, I suppose I could cut it and go away, I, mean, I don't even like to think about it. <laughs> I wouldn't have time, really, because I, mean, I don't have that much time there. Oh. oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah? Uh, speaking of not having much time left, uh, do you feel like you have any uh, specific anxieties just, like, <coughs> on a personal level? Well, I mean, as you can tell, I'm very worried about Maria finding out about him. <laughs> Really, I mean, you know, and even more, you know, that you pointed it out, I realized that I've just, you know, created a whole problem. I worry about, you know, as anyone does, and being alive for so long, there's, you know, some unfinished business. But it's sinister gray, something that I have to, I'm going to have to confront this. Yeah. I'm going to have to see him again. He lives down the street from where I stay, in New York. So, um, I do worry about those things. And, I mean, honestly, what I worry about the most, because I do care deeply about your species and your planet, is um, your planet. Mm -hmm. I worry about it a lot, you know. It's very, um, yeah, I don't think you, I think some of you do, but a lot of you don't appreciate just how special your planet is, really. Most of the other planets are really, um, you know, People make the best, the beings on them make the best they can with them, but they're just, you know, they're not great. They're sort of rocky and, uh, or just, you know, desolate. And you've got this amazing green, um, beautiful little um, dot out here with the tiniest atmosphere, though, you know, and, um, you know, you probably. You know, we're all really rooting for you, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and um, we have a lot of shows on, so we, we you know, we, we monitor what's going on on Earth. And um, it's sort of like, uh, you know, everyone's waiting with bated breath to see what you're going to do. So, um, you know, just, I, if it helps you at all to know that we're pulling for you, it's true. Yes, then. Do you ever intervene? <coughs> you adopt a project on any planet to make something happen? Well, I have at times to varying degrees of success. And it's sometimes it's not gone very well. You know, because I've inadvertently, I mean, there was a planet called um, David. And they had a, um, it's a terrible place. And they had made this arrangement with each other where they decided that no one was going to speak anymore. <laughs> they would only text. <laughs> and as you can imagine, it was a terrible idea because they were getting into the most awful arguments all the time <laughs> because they couldn't understand, you know, they, would, they couldn't hear anyone's tone. And so the leader of one country, on um, David, texted the other one and was like, oh, um, would, how are you doing? And he was like, fine. But just a period. <laughs> <laughs> and so many people died after that. <laughs> and so I went there and I tried to explain, to, I, tried to, I tried to tell them, you know, you have to, you should talk. But they told me, no, you can't talk. She texted that to me, and then I tried to text back, but my text got autocorrected incorrectly, and it just caused more damage, so I pulled back a little bit from trying to intervene after that. You know, it really scared me, because I caused so much more problems. So on Earth, you know, I'm trying to think what to do, really, and um, all I'm doing right now is just having, you know, little small gatherings of Earthlings. Um, 
and uh, talking you know, one on one when I can with people. But um, I am in consultation um, to perhaps do some bigger um, projects. Yeah. Well, if you only have 10 years left, mm -hmm. and it takes you so long to get anything done, how are you going to affect these changes that you're talking about? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, it really... Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to talk, I'm going to have to figure this out, really, because there's so much time left. See, that I just, this is true. This is really the truth. And um, I'm, going to have to, um, I'm going to have to get a move on, as they say. I will. I promise. I'll get, um, I'll get going on it. Yes. Have you ever been in love? Well, yes, with Sinister Grey. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Awkward. Have you been in love? Yeah. I don't. Um, Understand. It. You had told us earlier that on your planet, in your galaxy, there are not really genders, mm -hmm. but you're speaking about sinister gray as he mm. and Maria as she. And I just wondered if this is something that comes naturally to you, or have you had to um, change your thinking in order to to make genders for these beings? I sort of give them genders. You know, but because I think about their essence and, you know, whether they would feel in human terms more he or she to themselves or to you, and then I just sort of go with it. Occasionally I've gotten it wrong, and I've gotten a strongly worded letter <laughs> from the being, you know, that, you know, and it was just a guess really because um, we don't have them there. And it's interesting, too, to see that sort of um, concept, you know, on the, in the Marillion Galaxy, that the beings would then be like, once they learn about it, they decide, you know, like, well, I like this better, I like this better, you know, so they, they, they feel, it feels naturally where they would belong on Earth. So in a sense, maybe we do have gender. Yeah. Going back to the dinosaur, Rachel, and music, and um, your affinity pretty much. So I was wondering if you uh, are familiar with West Side Story. Oh, yeah, I have seen it. Yeah. Something about Maria. Mm. So I was just wondering your opinions about that show. Well, Maria was um, really. Um, she took it very personally. <laughs> <laughs> but that song had been written. And she felt um, that it was an attack. If she felt it was an attack on her. I mean, Rachel, if, it, if there had been a song called something about Rachel, Rachel would have just, you know, loved it. And started singing, you know, something. But Maria, of course, was just, you know, angry. And I said, Maria, it's a, it's a song on earth. It has nothing to do with you. It's about in, in neighborhoods in Manhattan. In New York in the, in, you know, the 20th century. And she said, you, know, you have no idea what it's like. <laughs> you don't know what it's like, what my life is like, what I do with her. And I said, like, I, actually, I do know what your life is like. I feel like sometimes you're the one who's completely out of touch with you, what your life is like. And then we didn't speak for like 300 years. <laughs> Which is really bizarre because the song was only written you know, a few decades ago. So, I don't know how that happened. But, um, yes? Um, I, I just wonder, I, I heard you love to drive, and I wonder if you'd like to um, drive a 1999 Ford Ranger of manual transmission right now. Oh, I would love to. <laughs> yes, I would absolutely love to. I actually have one parked in the parking lot. Oh, that's wonderful because I have to go to um, uh, the other part of um, Vermont. <laughs> no, we're not even in Vermont right now. We're in we're in New Hampshire, but um. <laughs> <laughs> we'll survive. Yeah, yeah. But that's not what the border people told me. Yeah. <laughs> if you 
you'd like to, if you'd like to take that truck, it, uh, I think the keys are, are in it. And I would love to drive that to my car because I've got to go back to the Meridian Galaxy, pick up a few things, and then I'm going to be in New York at the end of next month. That's a, that's a lot of travel. No, no, it's very difficult. Well, then, I, you know, I appreciate you offering me the truck. Yeah. So thank you. And I just want to say, what a lovely time this has been. I really enjoyed speaking with all of you, and I really enjoyed your questions, and I really hope that uh, we can meet again. And, um, you know, um, every once in a while, if you want to get in contact with me, just um, tap. <laughs> and then I'll get back to you, all right? Well, thank you very much. Thank you.